Greetings students. Today is an important topic of clinics and ENT. A topic about the how to take and write down the history of chronic suppurative otitis media and what are the possible questions that you may face while presenting this history on chronic suppurative otitis media. This is a picture of chronic suppurative otitis media with a central perforation. At around 12 o'clock, you find a small depression which stands for the pars flaccida. Running behind it is a vertical oriented white structure which is the handle of the malleus. Posterior superiorly around 10 o'clock, you find the angulated structure which is the incutus tapedial joint and in between is the central perforation. First, you have to write down the identity of the patient that includes age, sex, occupation, religion, address, date of admission and date of examination. Age, sex, occupation, religion, address other than helping to identify that patient also has got some clinical importance. For some diseases are common in certain age, sex, occupation and residence. For example, if a patient presents with bleeding, in elderly patient the commonest cause may be hypertension. But in adolescents, and that too in males, the com uh, significant cause of epistaxis is angiofibroma. Sex is also important because, for example, in Angiofibroma, it is a disease exclusive to the males, not found in the females. Again, deafness in female without discharge may be due to otosclerosis. Occupation is also important for certain occupations make the patient prone to certain types of disease. For example, if the patient is a woodworker or is attached to a nickel industry, he has got a more chance of getting cyanonasal carcinoma. Religion may be an important indicator also for in certain religious groups where consanguineous marriage is present, patient may ha be having some genetic form of disease. Address or residence may also be important because you have all heard about the Shab Himalayan goiter bed, where goiterous woman are more found in the sub Himalayan region. Chief complaints. Patient may be, if he is having a chronic suppurative otitis media, will be having these complaints. But they are present for a chronic period. He may be neglecting these symptoms until a few of the symptoms bothers him much to come to the doctor. You have to identify those complaints that makes the patient come to the doctor and write them. It should not be more than two to three. You have to write down the complaint. Also the laterality of the complaint, including the duration for which the patient is suffering this same complaint. The commonest complaints that we should be writing is the ear discharge and the deafness in the ear. History of present illness, in the history of present illness, you are to elaborate the complaints with which the patient has presented. You may write by saying that the patient was well before two years till he developed discharge in the ear following a exanthematous fever or a palm bedding. When you say that he was well two years ago, it means that he was without any symptoms of this disease and he was not having this disease. Occasionally, it may so happen that a patient will be having the discharge or the complaint in the childhood, following which there is an asymptomatic period and again then he develops the discharge or the complaint. In such a situation, you have to include the recent onset of the disease and include the duration in the chief complaint to be the recent onset and the history of Childhood disease will go in the history of past illness. Discharge you have to elaborate by saying that he how it started, how was the progression, whether it is a 
gradually progressive or rapidly progressing. In a case of tuber tympanic disease, that is COSM with central perforation, the discharge typically is profuse, colorless, odorless, and it's aggravated to common cold and pong bedding. Teacher will ask you why. Why is this discharge profuse and colorless, odorless, etc.? The reason is you should be appreciating that chronic superative otitis media in with central perforation, the disease is limited to the tubo tympanic region that is the part of the eustachian tube and the middle ear cavity itself now the protympanum and hypotympanum they are lined by the ciliated columnar epithelium and the promontory is covered by the cuboidal epithelium in the ciliated columnar epithelium region it is richly supplied by the gobbler cells and the mucus secreting cells any inflammation affecting this region will produce severe amount of uh, plentiful amount of discharge which is colorless and odorless also it is actually the secretion from the inflamed mucus secreting glands in the attic which is lined by the flattened epithelium the number of goblet cells are scanty so if the patient is having a aticoantral disease the discharge is less and the type of discharge is also different there it becomes scanty, foul-smelling, continuous discharge. The foul smell is due to the presence of osteitis in an aticoantral type of disease. Deafness. Deafness is a pretty common cause of a uh, cause with which the patient presents to the doctor. Central perforation will have this deafness, which is predominantly conductive type. But can it there be a sensorineural component also? Yes. Sensorineural component may also happen because the toxins that is generated by the bacterial infections as also the eardrops that you use to treat the condition, the toxin of the medicine, it may diffuse through the round window causing damage to the inner ear apparatus resulting in a sensorineural deafness. There is another question that is it possible for the patient to have improved hearing in presence of deafness? The answer is also yes. It is called the Im paradoxical improvement of hearing in presence of discharge. Why does it happen? Now, whenever there is discharge, it gravitates down to the lower part of the ear and it covers the round window niche. The round window niche is located below and the oval window is located above so once the discharge it covers the round window niche the traveling sound wave will not be able to reach the round window and will be preferentially reaching the oval window causing a phase differential and this phase differential will suddenly cause in presence of discharge improvement of hearing in the patient so in csom Hearing loss may be conductive, may be sensory neural together with conductive that is mixed and there may be a condition of paradoxical improvement of hearing. Otalgia. Otalgia means nothing but pain in the ear. CSOM is always painless. If there is a pain, then there is chance that the patient is having an otitis external, a painful condition of the ear or he is developing certain complications uh, for which he is having this pain. But prefer uh, predominantly the CSOM is painless. Why the patient develops otitis external? Because as there is discharge, he has got a habit of oral toilet, putting in anything and everything to clean his ears. These infected materials further aggravate the infection in the middle ear as also the infection may spread to the external ear causing otitis external. Past history. Past history is the history regarding any medical or surgical condition that has happened. Here you have to write about the previous history of childhood disease that has happened to him if there is a childhood disease followed by a period of significant period of uh, asymptomatic duration. Personal history. Here the history of pond bathing is very important. 
family history you have you have to take the family history you have to take the menstrual history these are not much important but definitely you have to write it general survey or general survey examination or general examination he these are the points that should be noted of these alert conscious and cooperative is something that a teacher may ask about that why you have taken the history in the general survey about whether the patient is alert conscious and cooperative this is important because if the patient is having a intracranial complication there may be chances that the alertness consciousness and cooperativeness of the patient is damaged so teacher may ask why you have taken this this is the answer is that you exclude that the patient is not having any intracranial complication local examination each ear to be examined along the following points right ear and the left ear and diagram of both the tympanic membrane is to be given at the end in the preauricular region you have to look for sinus fistula and scar what are the typical scars that you may find the scars are the scars of the incision of any previous surgery that could have happened these operative scars may be found at the level of the incisora or in the postural region teacher may here ask you what are the different types of incision that are employed during ear surgery one is endoral incision another is postural incision and third is the endometrial incision other than the surgical scars posteriorly there may be a scar of postural fistula now you examine the external auditory canal first without the speculum and then with speculum what is the use of examining without the speculum the use of examining the external auditory canal without the speculum is that if there is presence of any stricture or narrowing of the external auditory canal due to the soft tissue a speculum is going to not may not reveal this uh, constriction because it is going to push apart the soft tissue so once you are examining without the speculum you know that there is no external auditory canal stricture and then if you examine with the speculum you get a better image of the better picture of the tympanic membrane to note to examine the ear in cases of adults you have to push pull the pinna upwards and backwards in cases of adults and in cases of children you have to put the pull the pinna backwards to straighten the external auditory canal teacher may here ask you about the direction of the external auditory canal then comes the palpation you have to palpate around the ear for any fluctuation and write it down if present two tendernesses are to be elicited one is the tragal tenderness and another is the mastoid tenderness tragal tenderness is when you press the tragus inside and observe whether the patient winces in pain if the patient is having otitis externa the patient is wince is going to wince in pain as you press on the tragus on the mastoid also if the patient is having mastoiditis the as you press on the mastoid the patient is going to wince in pain tympanic membrane the central perforation either it may be the anterior inferior quadrant subtotal total perforation the different types of perforations of tympanic membrane may be asked beyond the tympanic membrane you have to visualize the mucosa in cases of tubo tympanic type the mucosa is pale edematous type then in the hearing test the most important is the tuning fork test the tuning fork test you are going to write the rinis test weber's test and then you write to uh, then you have to write down the absolute bone conduction test to be normal or abnormal the weber's test is either central or in lateralized to any one side here it is written lateralized to the right rinis test may be positive and negative teacher may ask you uh, here about what is false negative rini false negative rini happens in cases of severe sensory neural deafness the motor neuron functions of the facial nerve is to be written down the test of vestibular function to be written is the spontaneous nystagmus 
fistular test, Romberg test and gait test may also be done. Fistular test is a very important topic. Teacher is asked, is, we may ask you what is fistula test. Fistula test is nothing but presence of fistula between the middle and the inner ear. Fistula test you read in detail because not only in clinics but also short notes may come from fistula test. Then you must be writing down, then you must be drawing the picture of the left and right sided tympanic membrane. Here the intact tympanic membrane has been drawn. You have to draw a perforation in any part where the perforation is present to note a picture becomes meaningless without its labels. So not only you have to draw the picture, but you have to label the parts. Then you have to write down the examination of the nose, throat. You have to do a systemic examinations. Frequently these other system examinations are not written down and it irritates the examiner. Don't forget to write it down. Then comes the summary. Only the positive points, only the important points that help you to establish your diagnosis are to be written here. And then comes the provisional diagnosis. Here the chronic superative what you can write as chronic superative otitis media in left or right ear with central perforation in active, inactive or quiescent stage. What is active stage? Active stage is at stage when the patient is having a discharge. In the inactive stage is a patient who is not having the discharge and hadn't had any discharge during the past or it has no chance of becoming active in the recent future. That is ear has remained quiet and will remain quiet in the next in the near future. What is question? In the question, question the actual term means dormant. It means that the patient was having discharge in the recent past but now at present is dry but has the propensity of becoming discharging in the near future also. So it is a transient window period when you are examining the patient, the patient is having no discharge but was having the discharge and may become a discharging in the near future. This is called the question stage. The alternative uh, nomenclature may be chronic otitis media active mucosal type in the left and the right ear. Now what are the common questions that you may get? Definitions are commonly asked. You may be asked on fistula test, you may be asked on the tuning fork test. But the most common question that is asked immediately after you have completed your history presentation to your teacher is how do you manage the patient? And here the teachers wait for you to falter because immediately when you are asked how do you manage the patient, you say that sir, I will be doing tympanoplasty or meringoplasty and that is a wrong answer. To manage a patient, you have to say that I have to investigate the patient, I have to treat his clinical condition and then I will be doing a general uh, surgery for this patient. So how do you treat or how do you manage? You have to do a oral toilet, you have to do examination under microscope. Then you will be doing audiogram, x-ray mastoid, lateral oblique view. And if the ear discharge is continuing refractory to the treatment that you are giving, you have to go for culture and sensitivity of the ear discharge. Oral toilet is done to clean the ear so that you can have a better visualization of the middle ear and also it helps to keep the ear dry. You can give in antibiotic ear drops. Preferred ear drop is quinolone gloop because the common infections that happen in the ear are pseudomonas, E. coli, proteus, etc. If the patient is having severe infection and is not controlled by topical ear drop, you may go with systemic antibiotics. The patient is instructed not to go for pond bathing. 
try to keep the ear dry, not to put, uh, put in anything inside the ear to infect. And then if is having a contributory cause of uh, enlarged adenoid or infected tonsil or infected uh, sinonasal infections present, you have to treat them before you actually contemplate surgery. Then comes the questions on the surgery. What are the surgery that you uh, is done for this uh, tympanoplasty? So surgery done for chronic superative otitis media is tympanoplasty, meningoplasty, cortical mastoidectomy, radical and modified radical mastoidectomy. You should be knowing the definition of each, the indication for each, and also the difference between radical mastoidectomy and a modified radical mastoidectomy. The difference between radical and modified radical mastoidectomy is that in radical mastoidectomy, other than exteriorization and removing the attic and the posterior bony canal wall, you also remove all the hearing apparatus, mucosa, tympani membrane, and except for the step is superstructure, and you need to plug the eustachian tube. Where is in modified radical mastoidectomy that you do everything that is other than exteriorizing you remove the attic and the posterior body canal wall, but you try to preserve the hearing in this patient so that the hearing remains. So you try to somehow reconstruct the middle ear hearing mechanism and here the, this middle ear is ventilated by the eustachian tube. All definitions are important. You may be asked about the different types of complication in this patient. What are the complications that may happen? How the infection reaches from the middle ear to the intracranial space? Then how do you operate this patient? This is usually done by microsurgery using a operative microscope with a focal length of 200 millimeter lens. The surgeon sits by the side of the head, the head of the patient is rotated to the opposite side. You may be asked about the different incisions just told to you. What type of anesthesia? It is usually done under local anesthesia. But other anesthesia may be done, there is general anesthesia may be done in cases of children, in cases of apprehensive patient or who are very nervous to for this procedure but preferred is local anesthesia teacher will ask you why do you prefer local anesthesia you prefer local anesthesia because you infiltrate with uh, lignocan 2% with 1 in 2 lakhs of adrenaline the presence of this adrenaline helps to cause vasoconstriction causing less bleeding in the operative field and the analgesia that remains beyond surgery gives a good feeling to the patient. So what is vasoconstriction, less bleeding in the field and analgesia, a good analgesia to the patient that the surgeon prefers local anesthesia and also the chance of complication is less in cases of local anesthesia if proper skin sensitivity test has been run preoperatively. You may be asked the nerves blocked during surgery and the graft material used. The graft material means that what you put inside the defect to cover the defect in the surgery. Common grafts are temporalis fascia, fat graft, perichondrium graft, cartilage graft, compressed fence, etc. Of these, the temporalis fascia is most preferred because it is harvested from the same incision of the surgery. Plenty of it is available. It being very thin and fibrous material has got minimum oxygen demand. So it can survive in the relative avascular milieu by plasma imbibation after the operation. Uh, it is a, not a pedicle graft, so it just survives on the nutrients and the oxygen 
that it can imbibe from the surrounding plasma. You may be asked what happens to this fascia material. This fascia material, some say it gets absorbed, others say that this fascia material is converts itself to the middle layer of the new new middle fibrous layer of the new tympanum. There is a new tympanic membrane that has been formed. And if you are answering all these questions well, you may be asked the difference between underlay and overlay. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.